Most patients with type 2 diabetes should start taking statins, the cholesterol fighting drugs, as a preventative measure against heart disease, whether or not they have high cholesterol levels, according to new guidelines released yesterday. The recommendations, from the American College of Physicians, call for moderate doses of statins by people with diabetes who are older than 55, and for younger patients who have any other risk factor for heart disease, like high blood pressure or a history of smoking. The new guidelines are outlined in April 20 issue of the Annals of Internal Medicine, in an article that noted that about 16 million Americans have type 2 diabetes and that 800,000 new cases are diagnosed every year. The lead author of an article accompanying the guidelines, Dr. Sandeep Vijan of the University of Michigan, said that almost everyone with type 2 diabetes should be on a statin. The average age at diagnosis is 48, and even many patients under 55 have high blood pressure as well as diabetes, he said. Traditionally, diabetes treatment has focused on regulating blood sugar levels by careful control of diet or through insulin injections. But researchers have come to understand that control sugar really protects only against the destruction of small blood vessels, which can lead to blindness or loss of fingers, toes or limbs. Heart disease is, in fact, the more serious threat. Up to 80% of diabetes patients will develop heart problems or die of them, the article said. And Dr. Vijan emphasized that controlling hypertension remained the highest priority. He ranked control of lipids, the fats in the bloodstream that can affect coronary health, second, ahead of glucose regulation. Most patients with type 2 diabetes should start taking statins, the cholesterol-fighting drugs, as a preventative measure against heart disease, whether or not they have high cholesterol levels, according to new guidelines released yesterday. The recommendations, from the American College of Physicians, call for moderate doses of statins by people with diabetes who are older than 55, and for younger patients who have any other risk factor for heart disease, like high blood pressure or a history of smoking. The new guidelines are outlined in April 20 issue of the Annals of Internal Medicine, in an article that noted that about 16 million Americans have type 2 diabetes and that 800,000 new cases are diagnosed every year. The lead author of an article accompanying the guidelines, Dr. Sandeep Vijan of the University of Michigan, said that almost everyone with type 2 diabetes should be on a statin. The average age at diagnosis is 48, and even many patients under 55 have high blood pressure as well as diabetes, he said. Traditionally, diabetes treatment has focused on regulating blood sugar levels by careful control of diet or through insulin injections. But researchers have come to understand that control sugar really protects only against the destruction of small blood vessels, which can lead to blindness or loss of fingers, toes or limbs. Heart disease is, in fact, the more serious threat. Up to 80% of diabetes patients will develop heart problems or die of them, the article said. And Dr. Vijan emphasized that controlling hypertension remained the highest priority. He ranked control of lipids, the fats in the bloodstream that can affect coronary health, second, ahead of glucose regulation. The proportion of greenhouse gases has increased significantly since the Industrial Revolution. Humans began burning fossil fuels, particularly coal, in a big way, to drive steam engines for industry, and generate electricity. In addition to escalating coal use after the Industrial Revolution, there came the widespread use of another fossil fuel, petroleum for transport. At the beginning of the 20th century, annual global oil output was about 150 million barrels of oil, now, that amount is extracted globally in just two days. Fossil fuels are classed as non-renewable sources of energy, formed from decay plants and animals over hundreds of millions of years. Burning fossil fuels releases billions of tons of carbon dioxide that has been locked away away in the earth for millions of years. Humans are adding billions of tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere each year. And guess what? Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. The rate at which the planet is warming is possibly the biggest challenge to ever face humanity. The impacts are likely to be devastating, we need to act decisively, and act now. A single web page cannot fully answer the question of what global warming is. Following the links on this page will allow you to see how complex and serious the issue of global warming is. So what is global warming? It is a disaster of our own making. The proportion of greenhouse gases has increased significantly since the Industrial Revolution. Humans began burning fossil fuels, particularly coal, in a big way, to drive steam engines for industry, and generate electricity. In addition to escalating coal use after the Industrial Revolution, there came the widespread use of another fossil fuel, petroleum for transport. 
At the beginning of the 20th century, annual global oil output was about 150 million barrels of oil, now, that amount is extracted globally in just two days. Fossil fuels are classed as non-renewable sources of energy, formed from decayed plants and animals over hundreds of millions of years. Burning fossil fuels releases billions of tons of carbon dioxide that has been locked away away in the earth for millions of years. Humans are adding billions of tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere each year. And guess what? Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. The rate at which the planet is warming is possibly the biggest challenge to ever face humanity. The impacts are likely to be devastating, we need to act decisively, and act now. A single web page cannot fully answer the question of what global warming is. Following the links on this page will allow you to see how complex and serious the issue of global warming is. So what is global warming? It is a disaster of our own making. The holiday of Valentine's Day probably derives its origins from the ancient Roman feast of Lupercalia. In the early days of Rome, fierce wolves roamed the woods nearby. The Romans called upon one of their gods, Lupercus, to keep the wolves away. A festival held in honor of Lupercus was celebrated on February 15. The festival was celebrated as a spring festival. Their calendar was different at that time, with February falling in early springtime. One of the customs of the young people was name drawing. On the eve of the festival of Lupercalia the names of Roman girls were written on slips of paper and placed into jars. Each young man drew a slip. The girl whose name was chosen was to be his sweetheart for the year. Legend has it that the holiday became Valentine's Day after a priest named Valentine. Valentine was a priest in Rome at the time Christianity was a new religion. The emperor at that time, Claudius II, ordered the Roman soldiers not to marry or become engaged. Claudius believed that as married men, his soldiers would want to stay home with their families rather than fight his wars. Valentine defied the emperor's decree and secretly married the young couples. He was eventually arrested, imprisoned, and put to death. Valentine was beheaded on February 14, the eve of the Roman holiday Lupercalia. The holiday of Valentine's Day probably derives its origins from the ancient Roman feast of Lupercalia. In the early days of Rome, fierce wolves roamed the woods nearby. The Romans called upon one of their gods, Lupercus, to keep the wolves away. A festival held in honor of Lupercus was celebrated on February 15. The festival was celebrated as a spring festival. Their calendar was different at that time, with February falling in early springtime. One of the customs of the young people was name drawing. On the eve of the festival of Lupercalia the names of Roman girls were written on slips of paper and placed into jars. Each young man drew a slip. The girl whose name was chosen was to be his sweetheart for the year. Legend has it that the holiday became Valentine's Day after a priest named Valentine. Valentine was a priest in Rome at the time Christianity was a new religion. The emperor at that time, Claudius II, ordered the Roman soldiers not to marry or become engaged. Claudius believed that as married men, his soldiers would want to stay home with their families rather than fight his wars. Valentine defied the emperor's decree and secretly married the young couples. He was eventually arrested, imprisoned, and put to death. Valentine was beheaded on February 14, the eve of the Roman holiday Lupercalia. He about the same time was so much displeased with the performances of a nobleman's French cook, that he exclaimed with vehemence, I'd throw such a rascal into the river, and he then proceeded to alarm a lady at whose house he was to sup, by the following manifesto of his skill, I, madam, who live at a variety of good tables, am a much better judge of cookery, than any person who has a very tolerable cook, but lives much at home, for his palate is gradually adapted to the taste of his cook, whereas, madam, in trying by a wider range, I can more exquisitely judge. When invited to dine, even with an intimate friend, he was not pleased if something better than a plain dinner was not prepared for him. I have heard him say on such an occasion, this was a good dinner enough, to be sure, but it was not a dinner to ask a man to. On the other hand, he was wont to express, with great glee, his satisfaction when he had been entertained quite to his mind. 
He about the same time was so much displeased with the performances of a nobleman's French cook, that he exclaimed with vehemence, I'd throw such a rascal into the river, and he then proceeded to alarm a lady at whose house he was to sup, by the following manifesto of his skill, I, madam, who live at a variety of good tables, am a much better judge of cookery, than any person who has a very tolerable cook, but lives much at home, for his palate is gradually adapted to the taste of his cook, whereas, madam, in trying by a wider range, I can more exquisitely judge. When invited to dine, even with an intimate friend, he was not pleased if something better than a plain dinner was not prepared for him. I have heard him say on such an occasion, this was a good dinner enough, to be sure, but it was not a dinner to ask a man to. On the other hand, he was wont to express, with great glee, his satisfaction when he had been entertained quite to his mind. When at table, he was totally absorbed in the business of the moment, his look seemed riveted to his plate, nor would he, unless when in very high company, say one word, or even pay the least attention to what was said by others, till he had satisfied his appetite, which was so fierce, and indulged with such intenseness, that while in the act of eating, the veins of his forehead swelled, and generally a strong perspiration was visible. To those whose sensations were delicate, this could not but be disgusting, and it was doubtless not very suitable to the character of a philosopher, who should be distinguished by self-command. But it must be owned, that Johnson, though he could be rigidly abstemious, was not a temperate man either in eating or drinking. He could refrain, but he could not use moderately. He told me, that he had fasted two days without inconvenience, and that he had never been hungry. When at table, he was totally absorbed in the business of the moment, his look seemed riveted to his plate, nor would he, unless when in very high company, say one word, or even pay the least attention to what was said by others, till he had satisfied his appetite, which was so fierce, and indulged with such intenseness, that while in the act of eating, the veins of his forehead swelled, and generally a strong perspiration was visible. To those whose sensations were delicate, this could not but be disgusting, and it was doubtless not very suitable to the character of a philosopher, who should be distinguished by self-command. But it must be owned, that Johnson, though he could be rigidly abstemious, was not a temperate man either in eating or drinking. He could refrain, but he could not use moderately. He told me, that he had fasted two days without inconvenience, and that he had never been hungry. At supper Johnson talked of good eating with uncommon satisfaction. Some people, said he, have a foolish way of not minding, or pretending not to mind, what they eat. For my part, I mind my belly very studiously, and very carefully, for I look upon it, that he who does not mind his belly will hardly mind anything else. He was, for the moment, not only serious but vehement, yet I have heard him, upon other occasions, talk with great contempt of people who were anxious to gratify their palates, and the 206th number of his Rambler as a masterly essay against Golosity, his practice, indeed, I must acknowledge, may be considered as casting the balance of his different opinions upon this subject, for I never knew any man who relished good eating more than he did. At supper Johnson talked of good eating with uncommon satisfaction. Some people, said he, have a foolish way of not minding, or pretending not to mind, what they eat. For my part, I mind my belly very studiously, and very carefully, for I look upon it, that he who does not mind his belly will hardly mind anything else. He was, for the moment, not only serious but vehement, yet I have heard him, upon other occasions, talk with great contempt of people who were anxious to gratify their palates, and the 206th number of his Rambler as a masterly essay against Golosity, his practice, indeed, I must acknowledge, may be considered as casting the balance of his different opinions upon this subject, for I never knew any man who relished good eating more than he did. It's been a challenging decade for the music industry, with a significant decrease in sales. For years, little action was taken against illegal downloads, with few effects for downloaders. However, two new approaches are seeing positive results. Firstly, the industry's working with internet service providers to slow an illegal downloader's connection. Secondly, it's working directly with digital music websites. In Sweden, three out of five illegal file sharers have cut back or stopped, with half of these people moving to legal websites supported by advertisements. 
It's been a challenging decade for the music industry, with a significant decrease in sales. For years, little action was taken against illegal downloads, with few effects for downloaders. However, two new approaches are seeing positive results. Firstly, the industry's working with internet service providers to slow an illegal downloader's connection. Secondly, it's working directly with digital music websites. In Sweden, three out of five illegal file sharers have cut back or stopped, with half of these people moving to legal websites supported by advertisements. They who beheld with wonder how much he eat upon all occasions when his dinner was to his taste could not easily conceive what he must have meant by hunger. And not only was he remarkable for the extraordinary quantity which he eat, but he was, or affected to be, a man of very nice discernment in the science of cookery. He used to descant critically on the dishes which had been at table where he had dined or supped, and to recollect very minutely what he had liked. I remember when he was in Scotland, his praising Gordon's palates, a dish of palates at the Honorable Alexander Gordon's, with a warmth of expression which might have done honor to more important subjects. As for Maclaren's imitation of a made dish, it was a wretched attempt. They who beheld with wonder how much he eat upon all occasions when his dinner was to his taste could not easily conceive what he must have meant by hunger. And not only was he remarkable for the extraordinary quantity which he eat, but he was, or affected to be, a man of very nice discernment in the science of cookery. He used to descant critically on the dishes which had been at table where he had dined or supped, and to recollect very minutely what he had liked. I remember when he was in Scotland, his praising Gordon's palates, a dish of palates at the Honorable Alexander Gordon's, with a warmth of expression which might have done honor to more important subjects. As for Maclaren's imitation of a made dish, it was a wretched attempt. This being acquired and established, silence would be more easy, and my desire being to gain knowledge at the same time that I improved in virtue, and considering that in conversation it was obtained rather by the use of the ears than of the tongue, and therefore wishing to break a habit I was getting into of prattling, punning, and joking, which only made me acceptable to trifling company, I gave silence the second place. This and the next, order, I expected would allow me more time for attending to my project and my studies. Resolution, once become habitual, would keep me firm in my endeavors to obtain all the subsequent virtues, frugality and industry freeing me from my remaining debt, and producing affluence and independence, would make more easy the practice of sincerity and justice, etc. Conceiving then, that, agreeably to the advice of Pythagoras in his golden verses, daily examination would be necessary. This being acquired and established, silence would be more easy, and my desire being to gain knowledge at the same time that I improved in virtue, and considering that in conversation it was obtained rather by the use of the ears than of the tongue, and therefore wishing to break a habit I was getting into of prattling, punning, and joking, which only made me acceptable to trifling company, I gave silence the second place. This and the next, order, I expected would allow me more time for attending to my project and my studies. Resolution, once become habitual, would keep me firm in my endeavors to obtain all the subsequent virtues, frugality and industry freeing me from my remaining debt, and producing affluence and independence, would make more easy the practice of sincerity and justice, etc. Conceiving then, that, agreeably to the advice of Pythagoras in his golden verses, daily examination would be necessary. There is such a thing as information overload. There is just so much information out there now that we can't cope with it or fully absorb it, or even decide which bits of it we want to keep in our minds, or which to discard. There is a similar thing going on with the range of choices we have as consumers. There is so much stuff out there, so much to choose from, that, according to some experts, this situation is making us miserable. Most of us believe that the more we have to choose from the better, yet apparently our dissatisfaction with this wealth of choice, or rather the anxiety it produces, is part of a larger tract. It seems that, as society grows more affluent and people become freer to do what they want, the unhappier they become. 
There is such a thing as information overload. There is just so much information out there now that we can't cope with it or fully absorb it, or even decide which bits of it we want to keep in our minds, or which to discard. There is a similar thing going on with the range of choices we have as consumers. There is so much stuff out there, so much to choose from, that, according to some experts, this situation is making us miserable. Most of us believe that the more we have to choose from the better, yet apparently our dissatisfaction with this wealth of choice, or rather the anxiety it produces, is part of a larger tract. It seems that, as society grows more affluent and people become freer to do what they want, the unhappier they become.